Hi. So today I want to introduce a new concept called the view model. If you recall before, I introduced the concept of the MVC architecture, which consisted of controllers, views, and models, or models, views, and controllers. To reiterate, the models are basically a data container which contains the data and it maps to our database tables. And via our models, we would be using them in order to modify data, as we can see by looking at our code. If we go to our Solution Explorer and view our models, each of the fields here map to a, a column in our tables. And our controllers are where our business logic is contained. And the controllers interacted with our model, our note model in this case, in order to update the database via our application DB context, as is also shown in the diagram above. And then we had our views, which is what the user end user sees, and it consists of HTML, CSS, and Razor Sign text. These are uh, in, these interact with the controller, and the controller can pass information to the views, as we see in our code right over here. As you see in the create action of our notes controller, we're passing back the saved note to the view as a parameter. So then what is this view model I speak of? So while views usually communicate distinctly with the controllers and models are interacted with via the controller in order to make modifications to the database, the view model is a type of model that doesn't map to a database table. Rather, it acts as an intermediary between views and models. So the view model, put simply, acts as an intermediary between the views and models, usually has a subset of the fields of the model, but not always, and is used to prevent something called overposting attacks, which I'll get into in a moment and it does not map into a database table. So you might be asking yourself why I brought this up. So if you recall, we were looking at our code and looking at the register uh, page. In order to modify and add additional data annotations to the birthday field, we were interacting with something called an input model. Later in the code, what we find is that this input model that was declared here is mapped to another class right here. So the actual input parameters that are passed in through the register form are passed in as an input model, which has a subset of the fields of the application user. And each of those fields are mapped to uh, attribute in the application user model. So the application user model has a corresponding table, while the input model does not. So the input model is essentially a view model. Why is this important? And what is this overposting attack I speak of? OK, so if we go into Explorer and open up our application, I'm going to show you a nifty little trick. Open up your debug tools by right-clicking and selecting Inspect Element. What will happen is that you will have an Elements tab in whatever browser you're using. It will have a tab similar. And you can click this arrow sign. And then you can click on a word. And as you can see here, it says Learn About Building Web Applications with ASP.NET Core. And I could actually change that to whatever I want. So I'll add learn about, learn the bout of the 
So as you can see, the changes I made on the view page, front end code, changed the actual website's text. By doing this, I could actually change the amount of input fields, add or remove the input fields on the register page. Let me show you. So we'll open it up again, debug tools. Then I'm going to select my first name input and I'm going to add another input. Here. Let's see. Edit as HTML. I'll say input name is equal to input dot. Hmm. What would be an attribute we didn't have here? User employee number type equals text. Okay. So I added it and suddenly there's a new input box here. So if I was actually to fill out this input form and post it to my backend application and we're passing in a model that directly mapped to our database table, we would be able to modify fields that weren't intended to be modified. And that is not a good thing because in certain scenarios, you can actually uh, cause issues based on how important or how protected that data is. Consequently, we use view models as an intermediary in order to prevent um, this scenario, which is called an overposting attack, in which you're able to modify fields, which you shouldn't be able to modify. And that's where view models come in. Not only do they simplify code, but they add an additional layer of protection. So, currently, our view of our database MVC architecture now consists of not just models, but views, controllers, models, and view models, which are a type of model that doesn't map to a database table, but acts as an intermediary between views and models. And now you know what input model is in the register page and why it is used.